So in this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the angular velocity of a smaller pulley in a two pulley system. So here's the problem we're going to do. It says two pulleys are connected by a belt. The two pulleys have radii of 15 centimeters and eight centimeters. And the larger pulley rotates 25 times every 36 seconds. Find the angular velocity of the smaller pulley in radians per second. So we're looking for angular velocity or angular speed in radians per second. So the first step is draw a picture of the two pulley system. Always draw the picture first. So here's a larger pulley. He has a radius of 15 centimeters. It's connecting back to a smaller pulley. going to be connected by a belt. The smaller pulley has a radius of 8 centimeters. That's a horrible pulley. It's, it's poking a hole through the other guy. Let's see here. Let's try this one more time. There we go. A little bit better. And we're told that we are rotating the large pulley um, 25 times every 36 seconds. So it's really more of an angular speed because we're not told whether we're rotating clockwise or counterclockwise, that's left to the imagination in this case. <clears throat> but we are given an angular speed of the large of the large pulley, angular speed of the large pulley is 25 rev uh, 25 revolutions, right? It rotates 25 times, so that's 25 revolutions per. 36 seconds. So we can take this information right here and convert it directly into an angular speed. <clears throat> they don't need to worry at this moment that the final answer is supposed to be in radians per second. So now I know how fast this is rotating. So if we suppose that it's rotating counterclockwise, the angular speed is going to get converted into a linear speed for the belt. The belt is going to have a linear speed that transfers the angular speed from the large pulley into the small pulley. And we can uh, relate, we can find that linear speed by looking at the circumference of the large pulley. So the circumference, so if we're working with the large pulley, <clears throat> the circumference of that large pulley is going to be 2 times pi times its radius but its radius is 15. So the circumference is going to be 30 pi, and we're make, making measurements in centimeters. And so the idea is, is every one revolution of the large pulley, we have to travel through a linear distance of 30 pi centimeters. One revolution corresponds to one circumference. One rev is equivalent to one circumference and the circumference is 30 pi centimeters. So I know that my final answer over here, my final answer needs to be in radians per second. I know I'm shooting for radians per second. And what I'm going to do is take the angular speed of the large pulley. I'm going to convert it into a linear speed using the relationship that one revolution is going to correspond to one circumference or one revolution is going to correspond to 30 pi centimeters. So linear speed is going to be 30 pi centimeters per one revolution. Once one circumference per one revolution, revolution divided by revolution cancels. And now I have the linear speed of the belt measured in centimeters per second. <clears throat> Now we're going to need to convert the linear speed in the belt back into an angular speed in the smaller pulley. So my angular speed should write smaller pulley. We're going to work with the smaller pulley here for a minute. So the smaller pulley has a circumference as well. The circumference is going to be two pi times its radius, but its radius is 8, so that's going to equal 16 pi centimeters. 
And because I want a relationship that's going to give me radians per second, I'm going, I'm going to want to recognize that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians, which is going to be equivalent to a distance of 16 pi centimeters. In other words, when I do one revolution, or I rotate two pi radians or 360 degrees, I will do the circumference of the small pulley one time. So I'm going to convert now into a radians per second by taking and putting my centimeters in the denominator, 16 pi centimeters, so that I get centimeters divided by centimeters is one. And I know that one revolution or two pi radians is what will generate the 16 pi centimeters or the circumference of the tire. And now I have a an angular speed in radians per second, the only units left that haven't canceled, and it just remains to simplify things a little bit. So I see that the pi is here will cancel each other. We see that this 2 will go into the 16 8 times. We can do 6 into 35 times and 6 into 36 6 times. And will anything else cancel for us? Doesn't look like it, so we can go ahead and multiply. We get 25 times 5 times pi is 125 pi over 6 times 8 is 48 and our our angular speed is in radians per second so this is going to be radians per second except you have to know how to make the letter C.